Indie Authors Discussion is brought to you by Authors United Publishing. Are you ready to publish a book? Well, we can help. And Tim and I can help you get published and retain all copyrights and royalties. There are no hidden fees for what we offer. We publish, edit, proof, ghostwrite, and publish on paperback, hardback, Kindle, and Audible. We stay with the process until the final step is completed. We also narrate and would not be opposed to narrating your work. Our prices begin at $150, and for up to the maximum of $600, you get everything. So if you're ready, message us anytime, and we can discuss what we can do for you. Now, here is Indie Authors Discussion with Tim, Lori, and Elijah Simpson. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our seventh podcast. Wow, seven. Number seven. And this is the opposite because today I'm opening it instead of, well, you know who always opens it. (laughs) Okay, so this is opposite day. Yes. So we hope everyone had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I know we did. We had some family over and uh, all of us were able to cook together and make the meal. Eli uh, put together a really nice red sauce. It was very good. And uh, I uh, put some stuffed shells and fried some ravioli. And And I also stuffed the shells. Yes, you did. Mm -hmm. Yes, you did. And Lori worked diligently on the turkey and ham and the fixings. (laughs) It was was a wonderful, wonderful time of fellowship, talking and having fun and food. And we hope everyone was able to have the same experience this year. Yes, we do. We we were very blessed with good company, good food, um, and even a game of aggravation. Yes, I also got aggravated too. That somebody won, and I'm not going to mention who. It was me. Uh, yeah, it was him. Out of, uh, and it um, was like five, well, five of you playing, wasn't it? Five it was, or yes. Five. It, w- it was five of us, and it was very exciting. I um, was, uh, I was stuck on doing dishes and, and things, so I didn't, get to, I didn't get to. And but then I had to use the bathroom, so then he took over for me. Okay, then. That's probably more information than anyone yeah. wanted to L- know. Little TMI it. there, but, uh, so, real quick, tell me what your favorite food was. Uh, well, I liked, uh. I love the stuffed shells. I'm a pasta guy. Yeah, they yep. were really good. That was very pleasant. I like the stuffed shells, but I also did like the ravioli. Mm-hmm. And I like the turkey. The turkey was really, really tender. Normally, turkey is just dry to me, and I don't care much for turkey for Thanksgiving. I usually go for the ham. I don't think I even eat the ham this year. I don't think you did either. But I did try some of that turkey, and it was so good. Thanks. She had cooked that all night long in a crock pot. Oh, no. oh wow, it was good. That's the only way to do a turkey. And it's so tender, it just fell apart. What about you, Eli? What was your favorite? You said ravioli? Yeah, but I also did like the turkey. Okay. <laughs> what about you, babe? What do you like? I really like the deviled eggs. There, I said it. Deviled eggs. Yeah. Me too. I, yeah. I yeah. had a few yesterday and I, I had a couple this morning before breakfast. Yeah, see, so yeah, I don't uh, I don't particularly <laughs> care for eggs that have been boiled in water. And just, <laughs> they, they smell rotten to me, so I just I can't eat them. Yeah, I don't like the inside of boiled eggs. It does not taste good. But you like the deviled eggs. Yes, but I also do like only the outside of boiled eggs I can eat. Because um, cause at lunch, sometimes I'll just eat the outer parts of all the um, boiled eggs. I'll just throw the other part. And then I'll just throw like the inside away. The yolk. Mm-hmm. See, I, I just, I like eggs mostly just fried. I like that yellow nice and And me too, but when I want to add something in it, mm-hmm. I prefer them scrambled. But when I just want to have plain, right. I'll have fried. Right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there was lots of deviled eggs and they were pretty popular. They were. And uh, so we had a really good time. It was fun. We enjoyed it. And we hope that everyone did too. We have a really, uh, really nice show for you here. Um, we've got an author from Australia. We sure do. Susan Day, who will be uh, talking with us here in a little bit. 
and her book Mindful Arts Therapy. Uh, shit sounds very fun. I it can't da- wait to hear it about does. that. It does. Uh, and she also has a dog training series, which maybe we can get some hints on how to make Daisy not bark. Or even Eli. We could work on getting Eli. Eli doesn't bark. So, yeah. well, sometimes he does. Only until you switch my brain with Daisy. Like what you said that you're going to do like um, both. Yeah, we, we like, don't need. We, yeah. days ago. We, we, don't, we don't need to bring that up. No, we, 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 <clears> anyway. Yeah. Moving on. So the uh, the dog training series sounds really interesting. It does. If we can get Daisy to read it and understand it, I think that would be great. I but, think we're supposed to read it. Are we are? Really? What was it for? It says dog training. Well, so. maybe uh, it's for the dog owners, not the actual dogs oh, themselves. So, oh, I understand. This. Well, maybe Susan can tell us a little bit more about that. So I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> Me too. Um, and in a few minutes, we're going to have Eli's moment. He's going to be right. What are you going to be doing for your moment? Are you going to interview somebody? Or, yeah, or probably just gonna... interview somebody. And maybe uh, can I bring out? Can I get Tommy right now? It, well, if you want to, you know, he uh, he actually spoke for you. And the, our Thanksgiving play, oh, which, yeah. which was our Thanksgiving show, was really good. It was funny. If you yeah. missed that, you need to check it out. But yeah, Tommy uh, come out and done smoke for you, which uh, I let him. I let him this time. But hey, old man. Well, there's Tommy. Yeah, it's me again. You sounded a little meaner during the uh, Thanksgiving play. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I don't know because. Why. You were holding me. Oh, is that? Is I don't that like one? you holding me. Oh, so you said. I was going to break your computer. Really? That's what you were going to do? And probably going to put on. Uh, I, I forgot what I was going to do, but I was going to. Uh, Tommy's, uh, Tommy's getting a little uh, tongue tied here. Yeah. Uh, just to. Oh, yeah, I remember what I was going to do. I was going to break your computer screen so you couldn't do any of your work. Uh, Tommy was having a meltdown for a minute. Yeah, yeah, I am having a meltdown. Okay. Oh, guess what else we have what? today? What? We have the next installment of... Microsoft Office. No. <laughs> Noir. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Noir. Yeah. Microsoft Office. Yeah. I thought that you bought Microsoft Office for me for my um, XP computer. Oh, yeah. Okay. Anyway, we have another installment of not Microsoft Office, but uh, (laughs) Noir uh, to see where, what's going to happen in this world of ours. Uh, It's heating up. Yeah. uh, Who's going to get killed? It's going to be one of those uh, those things you don't want to miss. It's getting pretty exciting now. Uh, so Eli's going to do an interview here in a little bit. And so everyone, just uh, keep listening and we are sure you're going to enjoy this episode. Okay guys, welcome back to Eli's Moment. And today we are interviewing Martin Swinewater. So, can you introduce yourself? I'm Martin Swinewater. So, where are you from? Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. So, how did you meet my dad? I just met him a minute ago. Where did you meet him at? Outside. Outside where? Atlanta, Georgia. (laughs) How could he be... And went to Georgia and just come back and... It was very difficult. Okay. So, um, what do you like to do? I am a teacher of conversationalist. Okay. I teach and instruct people how to conversate with one another. <laughs> okay. Now, what do you like to do um, when when you're not a teacher trying to teach people how to conversate with people? I like to talk. Talk? Talk? Yes. Okay. So... <laughs> um, okay, um, so how did you get here? Drove. And what? A car. Okay. 
Last time I interviewed somebody very weird. I'm sorry, I did not hear that. <laughs> you seem to be suffering from some sort of stress <laughs> or distress. Are you okay, young man? Yes, I just... <laughs> I don't know what to say. Because you have not studied my course on conversation. Okay. Maybe you should come to one of my lectures when I am discussing conversations for podcasts and interviews. So, um, where is it at? Atlanta, Georgia. How am I going to go... How am I going to go to Atlanta, Georgia? In a car. Okay, and whose car? Whoever will take you. Okay. Okay, guys, uh... I think that could maybe be it for Eli's moment with uh, Martin's Swan Water. Swine Water. Swine Water. And uh, I think that is it, guys. <laughs> is that, are we finished now? Yes, yes, you are, we are finished. So, what do I do now? Do I just stand up and leave? Or uh, do I just turn away? Or, or I don't understand what I'm supposed to do. Eddie, can you come back down here? Oh, hello, Mr. Swanwater. Thanks for uh, thanks for coming in. You're very welcome. Um, are we? We're we're still recording. Yeah, we're supposed to be done. Yeah, um, <clears throat> Eli, he he didn't really t- ask me any questions. He just wanted to know where I'm from and asked me. Um, well, I guess that was pretty much it. Your son needs to learn the art of conversation. What? What do you mean? He talks all the time. It's all he does is talk. Not to me. Well, did you Did you even interview him or? Ask yes, him? I did. Try, I tried to interview him, but I don't. I don't understand what he's talking about. He didn't. He just asked me where I'm from. And uh. And asked me if how I got here. I mean. And uh, what he what what he did and uh. So, so I guess, I guess that's it then. Yep. All right. All right. Well, you want to close your little moment out here? Yep. Okay, guys. So I think that's it with, um, for this week's Eli's moment. So I'll see you next week. If you week. want to learn how to conversate, go to Martin Swinewater, conversation specialist at conversationspecialist.org. Okay, guys. So, uh. Uh, that's it. So if you want to um, you want to learn how to actually um, do a conversation, so you can um, try to email him there. So I guess that's it, guys. See you next week. If you're looking for something new, something fun, something exciting, try some of the books by Tim Simpson. His genres range from science fiction, horror, mystery, noir, and much, much more. In some of his books, he has vampires, werewolves, gangsters, and some of both at the same time. If you're interested in any of his books, they can be found on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, and also on Audible with some narrators from all over the world. These are books you have to listen to. They're amazing. So check them out when you get a chance. Tim Simpson on audible.com. Welcome to Noir. Stop. 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 Stop, you'll kill him. Detective Roger York was first to arrive at the press building. It seems that two of our boys were there also. And as Roger reported later, Officer Monroe was following Beth Stidham through the alleyway beside the building. That's when she ran into Manfred Van Johnson. And that was when Monroe's partner stepped from his vehicle. It appeared to be an attack on Manny. However, Manny's valet was also out of his vehicle at the same time. And he fired a shot wounding Monroe's partner. Van Johnson, throw your hands in the air. You're assaulting a police officer. And you, over there with the gun, throw it down now. He was going after to kill my boss. I had to shoot him. It's all right, Marvin. 
do as Detective York says. Nothing about this is all right. There's one police officer wounded, and you're attacking another one. Get off him and get your feet. Roger, wait. The one Marvin shot came after Manny from behind. Marvin shot him from across the street. That one there came for Carl and me. He wanted us to go with him to see Jack. See Jack? What? Why? What you have here, Detective York, is a couple of crooked cops. Both of them, they're crooked, and they work for Detroit, my city, and they work for crooked people like Lips Malone. You're telling me they're on your payroll then? Not at all, Detective York. They work for Lips, like I said. Lips don't work for me, I'm a businessman. But Lips is not behind this. Yeah, and how do you know that? Look, Detective, Lips is a coward. They would never send someone out in the open like this. And I bet if you do some real detective work, you could link both of them to the shooting from the other night. And probably link them to the shooting near the Swinging Tail Club as well. And here they are, after these two fine reporters. So, why would they be after them here and now? Because these two witnessed it. They're trying to bump them off. Whoever's doing this is trying to get rid of the witnesses. Well, let me tell you something, Van Johnson. I witnessed some cowards do some amazing things when I was in the war. All in the name of survival. So don't give me that Lips is a coward. He could easily send these men out here. He could easily try to take the reporters. He could easily bump off your guys and his own just to prove a point. That may be, Detective, but trust me, Lips did not do this. Trust you? You think I would trust you? You say you're a businessman. You're the most corrupt person in this city. You own everything. You destroy people's lives. Now, hey, hey, take it easy now. I'm telling you, it's not Lips, and it's definitely not me. Someone is behind this, and I want them found. Fair enough. Oh, the ambulance is here. Monroe, you, Van Johnson, and what's his name? Marvin. And Marvin, taking all of you in for questioning. Beth, get Carl, and the two of you stand by, just in case we have more questions. And do me a favor, stay out of trouble. I'm tired of bailing the two of you out. Hey, take it easy there, Furlip. I wasn't involved in none of this. We were just standing here minding. Carl, sell it. We gotta get this thing over with. We gotta solve this case. We gotta figure out who's behind this. I know, I know. Hey boys, let's just go. People are starting to look. We don't want to draw too much attention to ourselves. I mean, the gun's already done that. All right, all right. Carl, you and Beth, stay here. Van Johnson, you're coming with me. Let's go. Around that same time, I was dealing with my own situation trying to cut a deal with a couple of thugs near the Detroit River. It wasn't turning out too good. One of the mugs name was Fat Tony. A big lug of a brute whose mama turned him out when he was 12. Been living on the streets. Works for various people. The other guy was Gallo. Bug Eyes Gallo. One of the worst criminals this city's ever seen. He'll take a shot at you just because he's got a headache. It's a bad situation. I didn't expect much to come of it. Look, copper. If we tell you who sent us after the right here... Hey. Then we're dead. All of us. And I don't know about you, copper, but I don't want to wake up dead tomorrow. Fair enough. Then why don't you tell me who's not behind it? Well, it ain't Manny or Lips, I can tell you that. Shut up, you idiot. Hey, Bug, stop! Ooh, ooh, okay, okay! Okay, Flatfoot! You crippled me! My left side! I need a doctor! Don't shoot no more! I ain't armed! Well, what a coincidence. I need some answers. Okay! Okay! Just don't shoot me anymore! Tony, give him the kid. 
I got more answers than I bargained for. It was far from over though. In fact, things were about to heat up in a big way. And at the center of it all was the smallest mobster in town. Hey, Numbers. I need to see Biggie. Yeah? Don't we all? What do you mean? No one's seen him since this morning. He just disappeared. Numbers, has he done something? Because the word is that... I don't know anything about what Business Smalls does. I just keep the books straight around here. Well, Officer Monroe was hauled in earlier by Manson's sidekick. So, what's that got to do with Smalls? And they found a witness to the shooting at the apartment. The right and shoulders are alive also. I need to know where Smalls is. It's all lies. I had nothing to do with it, Lorraine. I'm just a bar owner. I no got no horse in this race. Haven't seen him, huh? I'm going for coffee. Numbers, you, you can't go. She's probably here to kill me. Lorraine? Are you here to kill him? No, but it won't be long before someone does. I swear, I... I... Biggie, enough blowing smoke. Let's have it. Okay, fine. It was me. I need to sit down. Are you insane? Maybe a little. But I was... I was, I was tired of the... Of, of being the fetch it boy for Lips and Manny. I hired Monroe and his partner away from Lips to take out Manny's boys to, so, that, so that everyone would blame Lips. Then have them take out two of Lips' boys so they, they would blame Manny. It would start a war. And in the end, I would be the winner. That was your plan. To knock out each other's guy. Smalls, Manny is far too intelligent to realize Lips won't attack him like that. And he sure knows his guys aren't going to go to war without his consent. You'd have been better off trying to rub Lips and Manny out first. I didn't, I didn't think of that, Numbers. That's the problem, Smalls. You don't think. You just act. And now you got two bosses looking to take your head off. My head? No, no, not my head. Please, my mother would be so embarrassed if her son was headless. Please, what are we going to do? We? Yeah, I need you, please. You gotta help me for old time's sake. Please, Lorraine. Get off your knees. Biggie, people are staring. Last time I was here, you told me. I know what I said, but please, help me. And, and, and you too, Numbers. I, I need your brain on this, please. They'll kill me. Well... You don't have many options here. You can either fight or run. I would suggest running, but Manny has a very long reach and still may kill you. If you fight, you will have to kill him and Lips first. Or at the very least, the witnesses. Okay, that's what I'll do. I'll kill Lips and Manny. Yeah, 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 I like that. Well, I'm not helping you kill either of them. If you don't help me, then that makes you my enemy. Doll, <laughs> I've always loved you. I've seen you at your worst and your best. But this time, <laughs> I can't risk it. I really shouldn't even be here. Numbers, if you help him, I don't have to tell you the odds of surviving. Would you let them kill me? What would you have me do? Get killed with you? If they want you, no one can stop them. You know that, Biggie. You know how the games are played. I'm sorry, Numbers. If you know what's good for you, you would separate from him as soon as possible. This isn't going to be pretty. Thank you, Lorraine. But we'll be fine. 
Okay then, I'll leave the two of you to them. Goodbye, fellas. What are we going to do, Numbers? Say, where are you going? I want to look out of the window. Okay, okay, what do you see? She's not alone. What? What do you mean she's not alone? Just like I said, she's not alone. She got into the rear of a car, and it looks like someone's in there with her. What are we going to do? He is definitely behind it. Listen, why don't you just turn them over to the police? They have the kid in Monroe, and the kid saw Monroe pull the trigger. The rat said the cops shot at them. It should be open and shut. Yeah, nothing is open and shut, Lorraine. Especially in this city. You know that. I want Smalls dead. Make him disappear, and the whole thing will blow over. Monroe's already behind bars with a witness. It doesn't matter who he was working for now. He will take the fall as the shooter. But Mr. Malone, if Monroe does decide to talk, he knows everyone inside the police department that's on your payroll. All the cops, judges, everyone. It could be dangerous to let him live. Yeah, yeah, I, I didn't think of that. Okay, I still want you to get rid of Smalls. I don't care how you do it. I will deal with the Monroe and the witnesses. Okay, Mr. Malone, whatever you say. That's my girl. Now go back to Smalls and make nice. Yeah, sure. Whatever you say, Mr. Malone. Mr. Malone, are you sure it's wise just to let her go back in there? You know the history they have together. Charlie, just drive the car. I'll deal with Lorraine in good time. First, we need to make sure Shoulders is out of the city so Manny don't retaliate. Just business as usual, Charlie. Business as usual. We were finally able to put Monroe in a lineup for the kid to identify. For a nine-year-old, he seemed confident in who the shooter was. And even more surprising was the fact he wasn't afraid of these thugs. Yeah, that's him, the one, in the middle, with a bruised eye. Are you sure that's the man you saw in the apartment the other night? And he is the one that pulled the trigger? Yeah, I heard the knock. I thought it was food being delivered. I ran to the bedroom door. And the next thing I knew, kapow! Bullets were everywhere. Then he stepped inside and shot a couple more times. Then, when he turned, it looked like he was coming into the bedroom. I ran as fast as I could. Okay, kid. Good job. Did you see anyone else? No, but I heard someone else talking to him from the hall, so there was more there. But I wasn't waiting around to see anyone else. If those mugs had seen me, I would be pushing up daisies also. We found out the kid's name was Justin Bennett. He was orphaned when he was two. Both parents were killed in a shooting outside of Detroit. He was sent to a boy's home where he escaped and has been living on the street and occasionally working as a runner for the mob. Jack, the officer who was shot by Manny's guy said it was Biggie Smalls who hired him. And he's willing to talk if we cut him a deal. Yeah, <laughs> I just bet he is. That's the same thing I got from Tony and Gallo. Smalls is either desperate or just stupid to be trying to pull one over on Van Johnson. Speaking of Van Johnson. All right, Van Johnson, you're free to go. Thank you, Detective Manson. Say, 
Did you find out who it was that killed my employee? We have a pretty good idea of what went down, so keep yourself available in case we have more questions to ask. Am I in some sort of trouble here? No, but you are a witness. Fair enough. Edwin Johnson, yeah. If anything happens to Biggie Smalls before we get the chance to talk with him, I'll hold you personally responsible. I don't understand Detective Manson. What does Biggie have to do with any of this? Just remember what I said. You got it, Detective. Now may I go? Yeah, but not too far. Thank you. You just told him our, who our suspect was. I know, Raj. But I might have just saved Biggie's life. Have some boys bring in Smalls and hold him on conspiracy to commit murder. We at least have that much for from our witness. What are you going to do? It's been a long day. I'm going to go to Molly's and grab a scotch. What about the kid? Call social services in the morning. And in the meantime, take him home with you. He'll fit right in with your kids. Are you kidding? Mary won't like me bringing home some kid off the street. Oh, come on, Raj. Mary will make him feel right at home. I'll see you tomorrow. Don't forget to have Biggie brought in tonight, though. Yeah, yeah, sure. I won't. Come on, kid. You're coming with me. Great. Where are we heading for dinner? Can you not see all the badges around the hospital? They're never going to let us in to talk with him. Are you kidding? You were there. I mean, he tried to kill you. He wasn't after me. He was after Van Johnson. Still, you were there in the thick of it. But if Van Johnson wasn't there, who knows where I would be now? Actually, where we would be now. Look, that must be the room. Which one? The only one with the guard standing outside the door. Oh, yeah, right. Come on. Can I be of some assistance to you folks? Hey, wait a minute. No one is allowed in here. We're, the, uh, we're with the Daily News, and, and she was there when this man was shot. Oh, really? Well, go on in, then. Really? Sure, you're with the press. You have free run to do anything you want. Would you like coffee? Maybe a donut? Really? Sure, I would love a donut. Come on, Carl. That was too easy. Oh, no. Nurse! <sighs> this is my getaway. A place I can go to clear my head. It's called the Club Jazz. It sits in the heart of what has been called... Black Bottom, Detroit. Very few white folks come here, but I like this place. Molly owns the club now. She is a rare woman with class and style unlike any I have ever seen in Detroit. Her skin is like chocolate silk. Her eyes are large and brown. Every time I see her, I get stupid and fumble over myself like some darn fool. I know I should stay out of this place. But she and I have become somewhat of an item. I was friends with her cousin, who ironically was named Reggie Jazz. He ran the club for years, but got himself involved in some shady dealings and was killed, leaving everything to Molly, who at the time was a headliner for the club. I miss old Jazz. I had Molly to keep me comfort. She's over by the bar. Thanks, Marty. Marty has worked here since before Jazz bought the place. He's a large, dark man who looks more like an oak tree than a human. He's a good one, though. He watches the place like a hawk. He carries an unlicensed 45 under his arm, but watches out for my girl, so I don't say a word. Hey, Jack. I wondered if you were coming in tonight. When I look at her, I lose myself. The way she wears that tight red dress, how she fixes her hair, makeup, the way she speaks. 
Of course, uh, Molly, I, I wouldn't stay out for nothing. See what I mean? Completely stupid. She just stands there with her eyes flashing, her red lips breaking into a smile. She knows what she does to me, and she loves it. George, get Jack his usual. So, Jack, uh, I hear we might end up in a mob war. What? Where'd you hear that? Oh, thanks, George. You know, I hear everything you hear. It's better and quicker than a newsreel. It's only been a couple of days. How bad is it? Once we bring in Biggie Smalls, it should be over. Uh, hello? Yeah. Sure, Mr. Manson, phone call. Thanks, George. Wonder who this could be. Manson here. What? How? Okay. I'm on my way. What's wrong, Jack? It started, Maul. Detroit and the mob are officially at war. Mystery. Entry. Murder. On the edge of your seat, page turn. These are just a few words to describe the latest book, Saving Faith, by Lorianne Simpson. The small town of Mahogany Bay, South Carolina, is plagued by a killer targeting women. And now he has his eyes set on Faith B. Can the handsome detective Dakota McLean save Faith before it's too late? Or will Faith become the killer's next victim? Saving Faith is available on paperback, hardback, Kindle, and Audible. Here with Susan Day. She is an author for, that lives in Australia and she has written several books on mindful arts therapy. Hello Susan, thank you for spending your um, morning with us. Hi Laurie, hi everybody. It's really lovely to be with you. Thank you for having me. I am so excited to talk with you. I did a little research um, about your books, but first tell us a little bit about yourself. <laughs> oh, well, I, um, I'm a grandma and I live in um, Victoria, which is one of the southern states of Australia. I'm about three hours drive from the main city of Melbourne and in a, in a regional area that's very close to the, um, close to the sea. And um, yeah, it's a really nice place to be. Very, very sweet, very quiet. Yeah. Yeah. Rainy old morning this morning. Um, in, it's spring and it's Monday morning, but it's uh, it's not cold, so that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> that is interesting that it's spring there and it's the start of our winter here. I just love that. I know, it's bizarre, isn't it? It, yeah. <laughs> it, it really is if you think about it. You're, um, okay, so your books, there are... Uh, Tell me if I understand this correctly. There are several, several books, uh, like in a series, for the mindful arts therapy. Is that correct? That's right. Yep. Yep. And I'm working on another one now. Oh, um, great. So, <laughs> I know. so I've, I've always been a passionate writer, um, as my, also, my Amazon author profile will, will show. Um, I wrote my full my first book when I was about four, um, <laughs> it was after a trip to Dublin in Ireland, would you believe? Oh, wow. And, um, yeah, <laughs> I've still got it, so it's really funny <laughs> to, to look back. You know. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's um, the, the Mindful Art Therapy books are really, my idea was really to sort of introduce people to arts therapy. Um it's, it's not a new modality. It's not a new type of therapy. It's been around since the 1940s, officially. Um, but a lot of people think, <clears throat> they think, oh, I'm not good at art. You know, I can't, you know, I don't know. I can't do this. I can't do that. Well, in actual fact, if you can hold a pencil, you know, art therapy could help you. 
So the books, yeah, they were they were sort of designed to introduce people, the activity books, to introduce people to um, the, the ideas and the concepts behind arts therapy. And, you know, there's only so many people, I, any clients I can see in a day. Um, so I hope to sort of reach out and touch more people with, a, with this idea. Yeah. That is amazing. And that was one of my questions. Do you have to be an artist to benefit from the books? No, no, <laughs> not at all. No. Now, is you it... Know, we've, sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, 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 you go ahead. I was just going to say, we've seen this great upsurge in colouring books for adults, yes, haven't we? Yes, yes. And it's, yeah, and so art therapy goes that one step beyond that, Um you know, so the colouring slows you down, it makes you think, it, it, it helps you focus on the colours and the shapes of whatever you're doing at a very minute level and that stops a lot of chatter, it stops a lot of, you know, in your mind, you know, that rushing around and so they are in themselves really therapeutic but art therapy books go a little bit deeper, a little bit more and they're a little bit more effective long term, yeah. <laughs> is that, um, and again, it just sounds so interesting. Um, is it a book that you would read or is it a, a, along with a workbook that you would work through? Yeah, they're workbooks, these ones. So, so okay. Art therapy. Yeah. So you, there's, um, there's 25 activities in each book. Uh, I introduced, I introduced mindfulness and meditation and deep breathing so to, to talk people through what they need to do to prepare before they start each activity and after that there's a, a moment of reflection where you can write down your thoughts and what you feel you you experienced um, and so sometimes when we we set out to do an activity it might seem like we're just writing a few words on a page or coloring something um, or drawing or painting um, but in actual fact, we're really sort of tapping into something quite deeper in our emotions, which is okay. And it's okay to, to, to feel them, to become aware, self-aware, and then you, you work on your self-regulation. And, um, yeah, it's all about sort of trauma. But a lot of it's um, art therapy is focused on trauma. But, right. it's, but it can be really beneficial for people um, who want to be entrepreneurs, who want to sort of move on with their career or even their studies in what certain ways yeah that is very interesting um i was looking over what is available through um mindful arts therapy and you have several topics so you pretty much have something for everybody that might be needing a uh, something to help them to heal or have their release or deal with anxiety. And I think that's great. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. What, <laughs> is, what was your inspiration behind those books? I think that, um, like I mentioned earlier, I wanted to I wanted to reach out and touch people that may not know much about it. Um, so we have, you know, we well, meditation, of course, has been around for thousands of years. This the concept of just slowing yourself down and taking a few deep breaths. Yes. I, I I run programs for preteens, and I have a book coming out for for parents of preteens. So that's more of a, um, uh, you know, it's it's more of an, a reference book and uh, an information based book about getting preteens to regulate their emotions. And I, when I do workshops for the preteens, I say to them, mindfulness is like meditation, but it's something you can do on the go. You know, you can. Obviously, we, when we think of somebody meditating, we have that classic image of somebody sitting with their legs crossed and their right. fingers to get, yeah, you right. know, that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, but mindfulness, you can do that when you're at school. You can do that when you can actually do it when you're driving because you can just say, I'm just going to keep my eyes on the road and my hands on the steering wheel, but I'm going to relax my body. I'm going to, is it, where's the tension here? You know, in that sort of sense that we can... We can do it anywhere, and, and the kids really feed into that. They really enjoy it. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting. And and so the combination of, of creating these books are about just just getting people to, um, I suppose, being mindful and, and checking their breathing, checking that they're, they're okay and that they're trying to live a calm and, and you know, healthier life. 
that that is fantastic. I have noticed within myself that um, you know ever since COVID and we were um, shut down basically over here that going out now to Walmart. Um, if it's very, very crowded, it gives me a little bit of anxiety. Oh, I see. I guess. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And uh, so I'm trying to overcome that with um, with the breathing and just, you know, if it gets really bad, I have to call my husband. Um, <laughs> but oh, he's, he's okay. really good. He's good to talk me down. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, good. Good on him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's getting better, but we I feel like um, as a society, we really need something to just kind of help us through that now. And, and that that's amazing yeah. that you have written this series. Um, I also noticed that you have a dog training series. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Tell us about that. Well, I used to run a big dog training centre and um, I, I, I sort of moved out of the area and I left it behind and I used to train dogs uh, in a very gentle um, method, so, you know, like a reward-based training. We used right, to call right. So, it, so if they did what you wanted, they got a treat and if they didn't, they didn't get the treat. You know, that was, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's the basis of it, yeah. Um, and I, when I moved away, I thought, oh, um, I held this knowledge in my head, you know, <laughs> yes. and I'd never written it down because I developed this training myself. Um, and I worked with dog aggressive dogs. I worked with dogs that were on the point of being put to sleep because of their behaviour was so bad. Oh wow! Um, dogs, dogs that had perhaps like not attacked, but maybe just bitten or, or gone to bite a child. Uh huh. And and I'd walk in the parent, you know, people would be devastated and. Um, if the dog was lucky, I got called. If it wasn't, it'd be put to sleep. Yeah. You know, because, and, but I would sit down with people and I'd say to them, this is what happened. This is what the dog was thinking when it, it did what it did. Um, and people would go, oh, yes. You know, so the, the dogs, um, they're very similar to human beings, but in a lot of ways, their behavior is, is quite reactive and quite different. And if people came to understand that, They'd know how to manage their dog better, and you know, a dog, a, a good dog is a is an asset to the community. It's a, you know, it's a fun thing to have around, and it's a learning tool for children as well. Um, you know, having the pet dog and having to look after it and be patient with it, um, and they're just such fabulous companions. So yeah, I wrote. I read a big book and then I broke it down to some little books and yeah, <laughs> and that's my border collie. He's, he's all wet at the moment, but that's him on the cover when he was a puppy. Oh, <laughs> okay. He's been out in the rain, the spring rain, having a lovely time. <laughs> well, our dog Daisy, she does not like to go out in the rain. Um, I'm afraid oh, she. Yeah, what kind of dog is she? She is a miniature schnauzer. Oh, goodness <laughs> me, they're so sweet. <laughs> She's all black. She was a rescue. And um, she's a little bit on the spoiled side, um, but she honestly is a great companion, and um, we we do have a lot of fun with her. Yeah, absolutely. They're just wonderful. And you, like you said, when you feel anxious because you've got to go into a crowded area, how cool would it to have Daisy with you? Oh, yes, yes. She wouldn't I, care. Would she? No, <laughs> she would not care a bit. Uh, no, 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 and she she could yeah. <laughs> this terrific therapy doggies are. <laughs> I also saw uh, something called Astro's Adventures. Yep. So that's uh, <laughs> that's another long story. Um, that was I wrote those. I started ten years ago, and um, I've worked in animal rescue uh, on and off for many many years. And I wanted to, I wanted to reach out to kids, and and again, based on this, the, the idea that, um, I guess all that concept of how good dogs can be for children, and I, with my friend who was my mentor, um, and she, and I developed this idea that, um, we could have, like a rescue, a dogs that rescue other dogs. I suppose that's the quickest way. Yeah. Oh yeah. Now, yeah. So there's a secret organisation. 
and they get a call that there's a dog in trouble and they go and save the dog. Um, and a lot of people were surprised to learn that the dog Astro wasn't my dog. All, all the dogs and all the cats were based on real dogs and cats. Hmm. And I, I ran workshops at schools and I would say to the, you know, say to the kids, you know, what I did is I took, I took Astro the dog and some of the other, other dogs we had in the family and I over-exaggerated their, their strengths, if you like. Um, so Astro was very spoiled. Uh, in real life, <laughs> very spoiled. He had a dog walker that came and got him three times a week, and he would go to he would get puppy massage when he when oh. he you know he hurt his shoulder. Oh yeah, he was really spoiled. So I, I <laughs> took that and I blew that right out of the water. <laughs> um, and it was just such great fun. Um, yeah, it was just I just had the best time, and and we had an old cat that hated everybody and everything. Oh goodness. And, <laughs> in real life um, <laughs> and and he got run over a lot in real life and so oh, his, no. his name was his nickname was speed bump charlie do you have speed bumps in america you know we that slow you down yes yes um, yeah and he was just, and he lived <laughs> i mean for he lived a long time <laughs> and, the, and you'd hear ee, the brakes go and you'd hear boom boom and the, the kids would be like mom the cat's coming over again <laughs> so he was, he was he was the baddie in the books and if you ever if you ever want to have some fun writing write write a really good baddie for a children's book oh my goodness because he was just he was just so naughty all the time and it was just so much fun um <laughs> yeah <laughs> we so love that there's story there's 12 books in that series and they're so it's so much fun yeah love loved writing them yeah <laughs> Um, I saw one called um, Astro's Hound Howlers. Now, is that a joke book? Uh, yes, all, okay. all the, the worst jokes about dogs. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I could find. <laughs> that is really good. That is really good. What What is your favorite part about being a writer? I think discovering things or that I didn't know like, that were there. Um, you know, just, you know, when, um, writing fiction, you can, and writing children's books, well, gosh, you just have a, you have a, you know, blank slate and you can, you know, I, one of the books, the moon had been destroyed by, by the, the wicked cat and right. using Neptune's trident. And in the next book, they had to go and find a replacement for it because NASA was a bit cross. And th this whole story, <laughs> this whole story, that just wove out of control. And um, I remember one critic, she, she, she said, oh, I don't understand how these dogs can speak English. And my daughter said to me, did that upset you? I said, well, the fact that they were flying a spaceship, you know, out to find another moon, that didn't upset her. I just exactly. Laugh. <laughs> and I, yeah, it was just funny. And I thought, what's she talking about? Of course they can speak English. They can do anything. <laughs> Absolutely. That is exactly right. Exactly right. Because I can make them do anything I like. Yeah. Yes. So, um, yeah, it was a... I like that. I also like um, when you when I write nonfiction. I think I I really love that the sort of sense of nothing down to an idea. And so I, you know, like I wrote that. I well in, in the process of writing a book for um, preteens and how mindful arts therapy can help them, you know, better regulate their emotions so they don't grow into adolescents that make really poor decisions. And for me, that was the real interest was the. Um, just nutting to through these ideas and getting them, trying to express them in a way that everybody, anybody who reads this book can understand it. And I, I like that as well. That's what I really love about writing. Yeah. That is neat. That is really neat. Now, your, um, your Mindful Arts Therapy book for the preteens comes out in April of 2024. That's right. Yeah, well done. Yeah, done your research. <laughs> Well, my notes here must mention must mention preteen book. <laughs> it 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 does. <laughs> uh, but uh, thank you for the compliment. I like to I like to know a little bit about uh, the writers we interview so that I can sound sound smart on the on the podcast. Oh, I'm sure you are. <laughs> well, you're very sweet. Um, Eli has the last question. And are you ready, Eli? 
Yes. Okay, go ahead and ask Miss Miss Day what your question is. Okay, what is your most what is your most scariest experience in Australia? Oh, Eli, I used to live in a country where we had something as, um, you know, it was called a brown snake or a king brown. <sighs> and they are the top five most deadliest snakes in the world. Oh, my I um, used to come home and find them on the doorstep. Oh. And I can't explain that fear. <laughs> I can't explain how scary that is. Um, most people get bitten because they try to kill them. So my theory was to, to hide. I would run around the back of the house and lock myself inside for hours. I would be with um, you. That would be me, yeah, totally. That would, yeah, and they are uh, they they move so fast. You yeah, you you could blink and they're gone. Um, really? Yeah, they'll kill a dog, kill a big <gasps> dog. Um, oh no! Just won't, yeah, I, I did have a theory they could kill you by looking at you, but <laughs> it say, sounds like they uh, could. They, they were the same colour as the dirt. And they would just oh dear appear, and I, I was actually sitting on my my front porch, and you know it was a beautiful day, and I noticed these little birds that we have in Australia, little tiny wrens and finches, and they got all we, three of them were in this bush, and they were screeching really loudly, and I thought, what are the dickens? And I went into the garden and looked around, and at one point I bent over, and I was staring directly into the face of a brown snake. Oh my goodness! And so yeah, and so I had. And, whipped all the dogs inside and um, but just left it just left it alone but that's yeah that's my scariest thing and spiders as big as your head you know it's a great place to live <laughs> did, <laughs> did, you, <laughs> did you um maybe we have a bad connection did you say as big as your head yeah, some, oh, yeah, huge, huge, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, some people say oh they can't hurt you and i was like well oh, you know i don't know about that <laughs> Oh, it's probably not that. It would be me trying to get away from them that would hurt myself. <laughs> That's right. Oh, my goodness. And that, that actually happened to me when, when my border collie was a puppy. He um, he actually raced down the – I was on a hill, and he raced over the hill, and he must have kicked this brown snake up into the air. Oh. And it landed, and, of course, it landed in its, you know, attack position, and they – that, right. The sides of the heads flare up a little bit like, like African cobra. Oh, Ooh. my goodness. And I turned around and I fainted. <gasps> did you really? I, I did. And uh, to this day, I don't know what happened to the snake. I don't know. And the, the dogs had run off. And <laughs> by, the, by the time I got up and I got back to the front of the house, they were just all sitting there waiting for me. Oh, yeah. Wow. So Bless your heart. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would have probably fainted too. <laughs> So, um, tell us where we can find your books, where our listeners can find your books at. Oh, Amazon, yeah, and uh, and, and affiliates, things like that. But Amazon's usually the best place to go, yeah. We love Amazon. Susan Day author, yeah. Okay, <laughs> you, you said Susan Day author? Yeah. On yeah. Amazon. Okay. That is, everybody needs to check those books out because that just sounds just intriguing, the the concept <laughs> behind it um, with the mindful arts therapy. I, I just, I'm really uh, looking forward to getting me one. That would be a great oh, Christmas God. present. Oh, yeah, yes. <laughs> I just hinted. Hint, hint. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hinting to my husband. Well, Susan, we really appreciate you spending your Monday morning with us. You, you guys you. are, are a, I think, a day ahead of us, almost a day. And uh, we have just greatly enjoyed talking with you. Well, thank you very much for having me. It was a, such a delight. I really look forward to um, listening to the podcast and, yeah, listening to all the other authors as well. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Right, take care. Here is the promo code for this week. Now remember, it's the first person to use the code will get a full, full length book downloaded from Audible. And all you do is go to audible.com backslash promo code. We have one for the United States and we have one for the United Kingdom. 
So here is this week's code for the U.S. 3 L as in Larry, K as in Kathy, Q, 6, G as in Grace, H as in Harry, U as in Umbrella, 4, Y as in Yellow, E as in Edward, Z as in Debra, Zebra, and 9. And here's the UK code. 3, A as in Apple, 2, 2, Y as in Yellow, E as in Edward, E as in Edward, L as in Larry, Q as in Queen, W as in William, M as in Mary, F as in Frank, Z as in Zebra. Good luck!